Hi everyone, thank you for clicking to watch this video. I just wanted to um, take a moment to apologize in advance that the video quality um, is slightly out of focus. And this is because the camera was out of focus and we only realized after the video had been filmed that the camera was out of focus. This video would have been difficult to record a second time. When you watch this video, you would understand what I mean. Um, the emotions that we shared were raw, authentic, and very honest, and it could not have been replicated a second time. So I hope you're able to look beyond the slightly blurry video quality and enjoy all the lessons that's in the video. Thank you in advance, and I'll see you in the comment section. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Marina here, and as always, I'm excited to welcome you to another video. If it's your first time here, welcome. I normally live in Saskatoon, Canada, but right now I'm visiting my family in Lagos, Nigeria. And as you can see, I am not alone. I am here with my sister. In a minute, I'll let her introduce herself and speak a bit about what she does. And then um, we would have a conversation that I'll provide some back um, story to, I'll provide some context to why we're having this conversation today. But first, young lady, my beauty queen, MBGN for life. She's in case. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hi everyone, welcome to Marina's channel. My name is Fowe. For those who know me, like know me very well, they call me Fowe, but my like official government name you want is Sandra. Your passport. You want my passport. My name is Sandra. I am a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a business owner, I'm a creative entrepreneur, I am um, um, everything, all things creative. All things creative. You guys, she's trying to be humble. She makes the baddest, when I say baddest, handmade body butters, body wash, scented candles, bath soap. If you see those, some of those soaps, eh, acne how? Where? Where? Even if it's from village people, it's gonna be what to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, in today's video, as you can tell from the title, we're going to be talking about sibling rivalry and how sibling rivalry almost ruined our relationship. I would say it did at some point, but we rebuilt it. And the reason why we're having this conversation is that I think it was about a year ago, I was having a conversation with um, Praise for Wowe, and we were talking about parenting, the role of parents, like what you have to do when you're raising children to make sure there's a healthy relationship between the children. And I spoke a bit about how there was sibling rivalry between me and one of my sisters. This is the corporate. This is what I was talking it's about. Me. And I thought it would be nice to, um, now that I have her here, for us to have that conversation, just to walk things back to say, okay, where did this start from and how we have been able to rebuild our relationship um, since then. So that's what this conversation is basically about. Even though I want it to be fun, but it's also something that I want parents yes. to pay attention to and learn from because we're both parents now and we're making conscious efforts to make sure that we're not replicating some of the things that happened with us. But today we're just going to take a deep dive and go back into history to see what really happened and how we walked our way through it. So my mother had four of us. We have a brother, an older brother, and first daughter, she's second daughter, and we have a youngest sister. So let me break that down. First son, first child. First daughter, first child. Then our youngest sister, last born. So I was the typical middle child. No, very lost, no, no way. Very typical middle child, just so that I put that out there. Sorry, you can't. Continue. Okay. Um, so my first, I think the very first memory I have of when the tension started to build between us was we were very young mm. now when this my sister was born her hair was long like mm. growing up as a kid she had really long lush hair like you know how we take christmas pictures and we'll pack her hair like this and it will drop with all the ribbons and everything and you guys had low cuts yes <laughs> first daughter when my brother my older brother is going to cut his hair they will send me to go with him they will not only cut my hair, they will not carve the front. Like a boy. We, me and my brother will look like twin boys. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then my sister will have her hair packed in ribbons and, and it will drop. So when we take Christmas pictures, it's like my mother has two boys and two girls. <laughs> no, three boys. Three boys, boys because, because my youngest younger sister, sister was, was a tomboy as well. <laughs> so her own, it was like all the emphasis in how a child should look. The how investment, child. how a girl child should look. It started with her. For some reason, Linda Otoko decided to jump me. <laughs> I didn't understand why my mother did that. I never got a chance to really ask her. But that's where the tension started from. 
And of course, you know, with children that are that young, she was everybody's little bride. She was in everybody's bridal train. When they come to my house sometimes, one particular person I can't forget, she came to the house and said, ah, Mama, I want your daughter, your daughter, mind you, Mama has three daughters. Yeah. I want your daughter to be in my bridal train. And Mommy was like, which one? She now said, ah, ah, the pretty one. Oh. And it was not me they were talking about. I don't, I don't know why I didn't ever forget that story. Obviously. But it was a very yeah, significant part. Yes, Just that reminder that when they are referring to the pretty girls in this family, they are not talking about you. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. What, what memories do you have of For the me, I think I was very oblivious to... It's, it's usually easy when you are the center of attention mm -hmm. to not realize what's going on with the other, other, other person per se. But on the flip side, I thought that... What I heard, a lot of people called you Agbani because your legs were long and straight. You know, you had like really long straight legs. I was thin too. And then, my hair was nice but I have no knees. So everybody would call her Agbani and tell her that she, she could be Miss Nigeria. And they would tell me that I couldn't be Miss Nigeria because of my legs. And because you were chubbier. Remember and because when we were growing, growing up, up yeah. I, was a, I, was, I was really chubby. Maria was like slim, slender. Like wrong way model wrong, kind of figure. One wrong way kind of figure. So everybody would point that out and then they would call me the fat sister. They, they'll say you are fine but you are fat, kind of. So for me, I, I always felt like I wasn't as pretty as you. To be, to be honest. And I could say the exact same thing. About me. So you see what was happening. It was not like she did anything to me. Yes. I didn't do anything to, to her. Yeah. It was always third parties. Mm. I thought my mom was also oblivious to how that all of that dynamics yes. was playing out. Yes. And how it was affecting me. Mm. I was immediately put in a position where I had to be responsible for everybody else. Mm. It was like I had to grow up really quickly because I was in that position of first daughter. Parent so the expectation education. on me was not you are a child. When in actual sense I was a child yeah. looking for the same kind of direction, for the same kind of guidance, the same kind of validation, mm. right? But that wasn't there. And I look back now and I know that it was not intentional. Like my mother course, did not intentionally as a parent, set up. When yeah. you, you, I think when you become a parent, you just realize the perspective that your just own, becomes your different. Own, your own parents were winging it as well. True that. Because they didn't, it, the kind of information we have access to now, no, they didn't have that as well. So they did their absolute best. So yeah. I feel for me, I've just learned to. When I think about the things that all my parents didn't do right, or our parents were supposed to have done better, I just say, I just extend grace to them. True that. If True. they knew better, they would have done better. Absolutely. I, th I feel like when we become parents, it now puts you in a position to say, oh, <sighs> this was the point of view, like yeah. this is what they were dealing with. Yes. It's just that the difference now is that we are not, these parents these days are now afraid to say, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. Like, I don't have an idea what's going on. I say that to my on. children all the time. Yes, I don't have it all I figured out. I don't know yes. everything, you know, and that's what our parents and didn't have the opportunity know. to do. If I offend you if I do something you don't like you can walk up to me and give me feedback and mm -hmm. say this thing you did I apologize to them all the time for things I didn't do and sometimes I apologize to them in advance to say I, I don't know what I'm doing as your mom but I'm going to do my best so please forgive me if at any point in this journey you feel like I disappoint you 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 let me know and I promise I'll try to do to fix it best. absolutely absolutely um, so that's the tension that we grew up in this impression of I didn't think I was as pretty as you. I didn't think I was pretty as you. And then as we got older, as we became teenagers, mm. I feel like that tension worsened. Mm. Because we were not talking about it, mm. we now started to see each other as so, competition, competition and rival as yes. against an Sisters ally. And an ally. Do you understand? Yes. And it showed up in the way in, our relationship was. We weren't very we weren't very nice to each other when we were teenagers. I felt like Marina took out a lot of her, of the tension. I think she took out a lot of her frustration on me because in our house, the way we grew up then, your, anybody who's older than you is, the, the, law, the word is law, is, mm -hmm. is final. Their word is final. Their word is law, their word is final. So I couldn't, there was no opportunity for us to sit down and have a conversation. I felt like she, she bossed me around a lot. She, like she gave it to me seriously. Our younger sister was the last one, so she could get away with a lot of things. But I don't think I had that chance. And Marina really made sure that she held me by the throat. <laughs> it was like, Auntie, did I do something to you at all? Like, but I didn't see the other side of things. I just thought she, she just hated me. Yes. I thought she didn't like me. And I couldn't the really same way. I couldn't really be nasty to her when we were younger because I knew that I would get in trouble. But when we were teenagers, you know, and they the were spirit little, of rebellion. 
Can you sit down to go back? He's had a heart. I get him to go back. Yes. King Gay, like. If you if you put Marina and a stranger, I will pick that stranger. Yes. Easy. You got that bad actually. I easy like I would say my wish that that sister. No, this way. like I was loyal to people on the outside. Yes. Like if at did my expense. Yes. At and, my expense. And funny enough, you know the reason why I assumed that position mm. because you were very rebellious to me. Because so I felt no. It was like so. Right now you are saying you were angry and you bossed me around, so you were rebellious. Mm. But for me, I saw. Okay, so because everybody told you you were the pretty one, you now started becoming arrogant. You see, that's what I saw actually. Because everybody gave you that, oh, she's the fine one. She's oh, she has the best body. She has this. She has that. You now started. It was almost like you were unconsciously rubbing it in that. Oh yes, after all, I'm this. Because we were young, there was no serious any life issue to say this is what we're fighting about. Mm. But I just felt like she started becoming really haughty. I started becoming really arrogant. Like all of those compliments started to get to her head, and she was, she would forget mm. that. Look, at the end of the day, in this house, there's still a proper way to do things. But then, what I saw was, you are not going to talk to me like that. You are not going to treat me like that. So I consciously started looking out for those things Thanks that too. would communicate disrespect to me. Yes. And of course, when you're looking for something, you that's all you it, find. Yes. You know. So it became a Cut and rat like tug of war. It was a constant, and it was not shout kind of fight. But it was it just was silent tension. This it was you could you, you could cut it with a knife. Like the tension it was, was so. It was, yeah. Sometimes when my boys are fighting and shouting, I'm like, okay, that one is you good. People shout, talking. I'm happy. <laughs> so that happened for a long time, and then as we got older and started to make friends, mm. some of the friends that we had noticed the tension. They noticed the they noticed the. The, that thing between us, they noticed the divide, and a lot of people capitalized on it. True, a lot of people capitalized on it. There were people who I would come to you and say, Ah, this thing, I think you should be careful. I don't think this person that you're building this kind of relationship with, I don't think this is good for you. Guess I what? Mean, we're my that's how we are. Be best thing. Should now go and be best friend. My again. sister said you are a bad <laughs> My sister said you are evil. She said I should stay away from you, yes. guys. Demon. So, not only was I now. Enemies with my sister. I was confidently enemy. building an enemy of enemies Everybody outside. She did enemies with was my friend. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that part was tough. It was really tough, like growing up like that. But what would you say the where do you, what would you say the turning point was? What um, changed? I think after we got married and then we started having children. I think that's that. Um, I think for me that was the first thing. And then mommy really dying. Was a, I think that was like the solidifier. I think that was a solidifier to just realize that you know there is no need for all this. This life is one life that we have, and there's no point trying to. It's it's not. Don't make it so difficult. Don't make it so hard. So I think we 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 had very frank, hard conversations, mm -hmm. but they were necessary conversations to have. I finally told her I didn't like her growing up, and I wasn't happy with. Um, the kind of childhood we had, mm -hmm. and the kind of relationship that we had, and um, I don't know if I've ever apologized, so let me apologize for that. I'm very sorry. You will give me money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, 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 very. If I let me need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. <laughs> I'm very sorry for all the. I wish I could go back, but I can't. But I promise going forward. I will be the best sister to you. Oh, Jesus! The sweetest. <laughs> Jesus! Let me warn you. If you look for this woman's trouble, we are going to war. We will fight. Yeah, as Sawana, <laughs> we are coming for you. <laughs> for I think it's I think I think for us, for me, mm -hmm. I think the thing started to change even before we got married. It's when we both finished university and now went into the world and saw and now the saw truth. that yes. actually yes. we are allies. For seven in Abuja, yes. you were doing Lagos and Bibi. That's yes. an after MVG. When we started oh, seeing the world, YouTube. let me. This thing you said now it made me remember something. I'm going to say something very personal. So during the time when I was a pageant girl and I was shuttling between Lagos and Abuja, Abuja, I had a meeting. It was supposed to be for some contract I was supposed to do for some company in Spain. So I got on the airplane. I I touched down Abuja and I had this serious fever, like very very serious. So I went to the place they booked for me. I was lying down there. And the representative of the company comes in. I wasn't supposed to see the man until the next day. And then the man walks into the room. And he was trying to be funny. So he saw me shivering. And he was like, ah, 
what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not feeling very well. I don't know what his expectations were with that. He was coming to get something else, but... So he was trying to be weird, he was trying to touch me funny. I'm like, if you try that rubbish... I just picked up the phone. Marina, where are you? I need you to come and carry me from Susu Tan's place. It didn't take Marina 15 minutes. I will never... I think that was the first time... How, how could I forget? That was the first time he occurred to me that where... This is, and the way she barged into the room... Like, I think she knew that something was... That story. She barged into the room, like, she just opened the door, she looked at me, she was like, Foy, are you ready? And that was it. She didn't ask me what's up. It's almost like I didn't tell her anything on the phone. She just... It, she almost broke the door down. I was like, okay. This is my sister. I remember that. This is my older sister. The man, we walked out. The man was looking at me. I walked out of that meeting. I never went back. Marina, do you know that money was like $65,000? We walked out of that place. I didn't look back. I didn't even think about it again. My, my sister took me to her house, bought me medicine. She was pressing my head, pressing my back. I was like, ah, ah. Wow! I love you, baby! Let me tell you one part of that story that I don't think I've told you. I got into trouble for that. Oh. I will explain later. You know it was not my house, it was somebody yes. else's house. I did not think about asking them, them if it was okay. okay to bring my sister. Oh. I just heard my sister was in trouble and boom, we're going there. Oh. Do you understand? So I think that's why it started to change for us. When we started to go into the world and just see that, at the end of the day, it's your family you have. Yes. There's nothing out there. You, everybody is a dog eat dog out world. world out there. Mm -hmm. And nobody really will have your back like your family. That's why it started changing. That's why we now started saying, actually, when I'm when I'm feeling like this, I can call my sister and ask her, How are True. you? How are you really feeling? True. The first set of conversations were awkward. Mm -hmm. But from time to time, after significant events like that, yes. our, we just softened towards each other. And after that, the world people now started down. noticing that, okay, they are not quarreling anymore. If you go and tell her something, she will now come I'll and tell her. me. So it was no longer a case of tell us different versions. And because we were not talking and comparing stories, mm. we were running with these narratives that were not correct. So we now started comparing notes, working things backwards, and realized that actually both of us were victims of similar, similar circumstances. circumstances. And that's where we were angry. Yes, that's why we and were. we took out the anger. Instead of finding other. a way to talk about it, we took out the anger on each other. So we walk things back and we're like, oh, that was happening to you too. Yes, this was happening to me. So true that. That's where everything started to change. And then we started getting married and started yeah. having children. Yeah. And both of us now realize how clueless we were. Yeah. <laughs> in the we didn't know anything. We didn't know anything. All the advice yeah. they gave yeah. us was rubbish. rubbish. <laughs> We have to find our way by ourselves. So we have like, to find our way so, by ourselves, like wing it somehow. Like my so something's happening with my son. I'll call her. How far did this happen to your son? What did yes. you do? So we're exchanging notes and we just started building you know the relationship how similar like that. Children are, our kids are so like, similar. They are so like we have one of each. So we both have two kids. One child and one child are like twins. The other. So when she called me to say, oh this, I said, I've passed there. This is what. This is what, what to do. do. How is that affecting the way you parent now? Hmm. So because one of the things that um, happened with us was that even when the tension started between us, our parents didn't notice. Mm. Even though we're in the same house, we will sleep in the same room, in we don't know what's happening bed, to each yes. other. We will sleep on the same bed, we will not talk. I, I thought our parents, yes, for was very secretive. I would hear things about her from outside. I thought our parents could have noticed that mm. and then stopped to say, okay, there's something going on between yeah. two of you. You know, what's happening? Why are you not talking about it? So for me, one of the things I'm doing now is to pay attention between, pay attention to the vibe between my children. Both of them, yes. When two of them are playing apart all day, I'm stepping in to say, hey, tell me what's happening with your day. How's your day going? Like, we have those conversations to say, actually, I just wanted time away, away from, from Jeremy him. right now because he wasn't very nice to me in the morning. I'm like, it's okay to yeah. want to play by yourself. But, what time are but you when back? are you people going to start talking again? What time are you people separating the fights? <laughs> yeah. In fact, sometimes I have to separate my boys. So both my boys, one of them is a book mom. So that's the one that you hear has won best in academics. Ah, that's another one. Best in academics every single year, right? And then the other one just wins best in art or best in uh, the creative, creative side. side. So that one takes my creative the side. Street. The other one is very analytical. Yeah, and then one general. of my children, <laughs> like is that Barry that I agree? <laughs> <laughs> the, one of them is also significantly lighter than the other. 
So sometimes people make comments about that as well. I fired someone for saying that in the house. That's, that's a deal breaker. That's a deal can never You compare. can never compare my two children. You can never tell them behave like this person or behave like that. You can never ever. It's a canon law around me. But do you think that stems from how much you heard that growing up? Yes. Why can't you be like this person? Yes, yes. It's a canon law. So you don't, we don't do that. Even with academics, we sit down, we talk about, okay, so the one that is creative knows that my brother is the sometimes he will tell you mm -hmm. that my brother is intelligent yeah. he, act, he we are getting to the point where he's beginning to accept that and he's okay with the fact that his brother absolutely is, and then because we have had conversations to say you are creative so here's one of the things i also did when i noticed that that thing was becoming a problem the creative son i'll tell him okay do a painting for me and i'll pay for it I'll pay I'm for going him for painting. And now. then, <laughs> if you come into my house, if you will see it, the bad drawings, the good drawings, I put it up on the wall. Everybody must see that they are creative children in, in this house. house. So I celebrate everything that is unique about each, each and every one of them. So that when this person is feeling like, oh, this person is doing amazing here, well, what about me? You remember that there are things that you can also do. That and you raise your head and you see your painting on the wall. It's on the True. wall. Mommy is paying for it. Mommy buys my paintings. We are all, daddy buys it as well. We try to celebrate everybody's individuality. And when they are not getting along, I give them time apart. True. So, it's fine. It's you okay. Can take a break, but Breathe. Yeah. It's time to settle. Yeah. Come True. back. Come back. This this same same thing is happening with my kids as well. Like they are similar in many ways, but in the areas where they are different, I don't let them see their differences as something that divides them. Yes. If somebody is needs help reading and you can read, instead of saying, "Oh, you can't read," it is it now becomes you. yes. I step in to say, "So tell me what's the word? Sound it out." Sometimes. I walk into, I'm passing my children's room where they are, both of them are together, mm -hmm. and I hear one of them teaching the other, no, do it like this. That's if you it. sound it, no, 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 okay, you know what, let's start again. Sound the different letters, uh, and, the sound, and they are sounding it together. together. So, okay, so what does that form? Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, oh, you don't know how to read, and I can't read, it. Away. and it's not even the case, it's just that there are some words that, that come children to pronounce. Use. At the end of the day, the goal is to make sure that both of us are on the same page. page. If I can read and you can't, I'm pulling you up until we can both read. Or if you have trouble with math, I'm going to make sure I help you until you're good in numbers as well. So we're trying to help them see that, yes, both of you are different, you have your unique side, but it is never going to be something that will divide you. Instead, you combine your math and my reading that will come in force. So that nobody can use that to divide us. Right now, even me myself, sometimes my children gang up against me. Yeah. So they're already seeing their, themselves as allies. As we're on the same side, we're as friends. Friends and we're friends. They like each other, they can mm -hmm. stand each other because we created that environment for both of them to be able to thrive individually and still respect their differences. So yeah. that's one thing consciously I'm trying to make sure we pay attention. And then when it seems like one person is on a winning streak somewhere, mm -hmm. we find a way to get that person, instead of feeling, oh, I'm not winning, you join in and say, yes, that's my brother, or that's my sister. Mm -hmm. It becomes a we are celebrating yes. as a family. It's not my brother, my sister. My family is winning. That's yeah, how we see it. My family is winning, yes. And so that the person that's winning, don't, they don't feel like they're doing something wrong, wrong for, winning. for winning. We yes. don't have to deem their, their shine, shine so that your somebody else is strong better. So True. This thing called parenting, we're winging it. At the end of the day, a lot of people, oh, I read self-help books, I did this, I did that. Until you're inside the parenting. <laughs> yeah. The There's only so much yes. you can do with, with um, letters that have been written mm. for the general public. Sometimes it's like a blanket cloth. Yeah. You take the cloth, but you have to come and customize it to your to size. Your size. And sew it in the way that fits your body, and your shape, your everything. The needle will break. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes you have to do it many finish. times. Sometimes you have to use your hand to tack it because the machine will not roll. What's the place of your spouse in this whole journey? Because our rivalry was you. Mm. And then now you're doing it for your kids. How are you able to sell that idea to your spouse? Oh, I told him the story now between us straight away. It wasn't. It wasn't even. The gossip, I mean, I think, the gossip I think, is mutual. The go I think towards the tail end of that, I think that he was in the picture towards the tail yes. end. Yes. Where that, he started to change. change. He saw yes. a bit of, saw the, rivalry bit of the rivalry and, and, and saw the change. So he obviously knew that um, Foy and Marina didn't like each other a lot. And I think that was one of the things I also told him that I don't want my children to have to struggle. We also play to each other's strengths. So there are certain things I do better. When it comes to parenting, I'm usually the front man. I'm the bad guy. He is the, he, I think he's the comforter per se. 
in the family. Of course, they always do that. Good cop, cop, bad cop. So I'm the bad cop. I wear my bad cop vest with I want to. I want to be the bad cop because coming from that place. I would know when to stop and draw the line to say, you are taking this too, too far. far. Mm -hmm. So if somebody else has not experienced that kind of thing, they might not recognize it when it's when it's playing out. So I usually take four front and center of all. But he knows that, and I've also given him pointers to say, when you think I'm taking things too far, let you know, rein me back. And I don't like that, but I have, I, I do appreciate, I appreciate that somebody. Yeah. yeah, just knowing that you two you have blind spots. Blind spots. And somebody else can call it. Yeah, that's right. That exactly the same thing with Fred. Like it's a conversation that we have both had. It's not a difficult sell at all. Just to say we can't replicate this. What do we have to do differently to make sure our, our children have a different experience? So. So you guys, that has been the story of how we came here. So now when you see us and you say, ah, you guys are so happy, you're so united. Have it was conscious cars. effort. It was conscious effort. Yeah. And like you said, losing mommy was like the final ceiling just to say, okay, you guys, what we are all we have now. Mm. So kindly just sit down if you have any problem, drop it, it at the cemetery. Yeah. And she's going under. You are going to drop the grudge. Leave it there. It's going to be stayed here. We are yes. going back to face the We are going back to stay. And you know, funny enough, eh, you know, there was one picture mm. of from the funeral that we saw mm. when the casket was getting lowered. Mm. And unconsciously, all of us just stood side by side and, and locked held. our hands. Like this, so that we have a picture. Like that, we have a picture of four of us locked together, and that's, and how, that's how it has been. Amen. That's it's how it went. That's how it is. Honestly, if you fight with one of us now, you are fighting, fighting with, with all of us. us. No, you are. All, we are all enemies. In fact, it's no longer just four of us. You are when fighting with eight of us, plus our children. Yes, let's leave children mean. first. They never start. No, they join the fight. <laughs> well, well, yeah. They join the fight. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Anybody that is an enemy of your mother and father is your enemy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the improved relationship with four of us has now in influenced our individual relationship so we all now consciously just say because we're going to have periodic meetings from time to time all of us will come together with spouses we have a conversation so if there's tension between it. anybody we will we notice know. yes and we will discuss we'll it in the public it. so instead of it to become a family conversation we just try to check and say ah, me, let's it's, it's it so now. bad that even when i'm looking at people that i want to befriend i look at them and i ask not just for my immediate family my extended family can these people be friends with my siblings, my siblings. I, I check that if you can't you can't sit. It's not. If, I if love my you. siblings will have if my trouble. Who has friend, friend, this friend? I will check again. I will check again. One of the things I also consider: Can this person be a member of my family? Because the way I take my friends, they are like, they are my, they are my sisters. Mm -hmm. If you can't be a sister to my sisters, you can't be friends with me. Yeah. Is that? Serious? And it has worked. Yeah. It has really worked because now we're able to say something doesn't seem right about that person. person my spirit and eventually we will see it. the person will show to say that's what i saw i saw it that's what i felt I so something was off with it's that true. person from the start we're right? that in sync now. yes we're that in sync now so any attempt or group, or group of, of attempts, attempts so come and try to divide us. We go where you scheme. You gonna enter the streets and pick paper. We go where you scheme. Automatic madness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I'm so happy that I finally got to do this video with my sister. Me too, baby. I heard some things for the first time in this conversation. So this was not rehearsed at all. I just wanted us to be as honest as possible and like say how we're feeling. Long cry. Yes. I was afraid that we were going to cry. That's why I changed the topic when we were apologizing. That's where the cry was going to come from. So let me apologize to all the times I used to bully you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it was not you I was bullying, it was the situation I that know. we were both in. I know. But I know I'm happy now. that I'm happy that we have put all of that behind us and yeah. we are a force now. We are moving forward. So yes, you guys, thank you, my darling sister, for coming. I love you, I love you baby. I love you plenty, plenty, mm -hmm. plenty. We are going to recoup all the years that we have lost yes. in fighting. Yes, God fighting. Is going to, God has been restoring and Amen. He will continue to restore Amen. the years that we lost fighting. Amen. It's going to be years of love and happy tears from I now on. Agree. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. You, we try to make it light, but I really do hope that you learned from this. If you are out there and you have any tension with your siblings, you guys, this is the best time to make have the make conversation. It Please, it's make, that make that call. Make that call. Life is only one. I think I think for us and eh, just losing our mom and realizing that we are orphans, they are gone. They are gone. Life is only one, and it's so fickle. Mm. If you have that sibling that you don't have a good relationship with, please 
please make that call. Tomorrow is not guaranteed for can, anybody. Or you can just let them, you can forgive them because some people are actually toxic. You yes, really it's difficult. Yes. You can still forgive them. You can release them, release from, your them hands from your hands and love too. them from a distance. If that's what if that's what will give you peace of mind. But let it that's go. that's an angle as let well. Like go. if it's a kind of situation where this person is toxic for mm. other reasons other than just sibling rivalry and those kind of tensions, then yes, let them go. For some of you, it's your parents you need to have the conversations with just to say, you know, actually do this, this is what it was and this is how this made me feel. Mm. If it's not the and don't do it waiting for an apology because sometimes some people will they just will, see they it. will and never that's get okay. it. It's actually okay. It's okay if they don't get it. Don't go into the conversation expecting something back that they must apologize back. For your own safety, for your own sanity, let it go. Let the world go. It's time to start again. That's right. It's, as far as you are on this side of eternity, it's never too late to restart and rebuild. So, what you can, try to do. Thank you very much to all the parents who have seen this video. Please pay attention. Pay attention because what you do consciously or unconsciously can breed rivalry in your children and we don't want that. You don't want to be raising children that will need therapy in the future. That, but so eventually, I, 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 I think our children will still do therapy. Let me not lie. But let's not contribute let's not, too let's much not be to the bad contributing part. factor. Let, let's not be the, re the main reason why, why they are therapy. But they will go because with parenting, <laughs> You, you can never get it right, it's true. You can't do especially this generation we are raising. Ah, they will go. <laughs> I will pay. <laughs> he said we'll pay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned from it. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. If you did, what stood out for you in this conversation? Please leave Let's that in the comment know. section. Let's have the conversation and, and keep it going. Thank okay. You. Thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. Thank you again, my sweet sister, for joining. And until I come your way in the next video, it's Marina saying thank you and have an awesome day. Bye, guys. Annyeong. Annyeong. <laughs>